About a year ago, I made a video and asked the question, are CPAP and sleep apnea surgery the best options for people with a serious snoring problem and the sleep disorder known as sleep apnea? And the answer I came up with after several hours, in addition to my already existing years of research on the topic, was no. CPAP and sleep apnea surgery should absolutely be your last option, if any option at all. And let me tell you, I got so many hateful comments for the video that I made because my conclusion was that the best thing you can do for your sleep apnea is simply lose weight. And so people came on my video and they made all kinds of negative hateful comments and they, they asked me, are you a doctor? Uh, they basically accused me of being a moron and they basically stated that I have no right to have an opinion or to do my own research because I'm not a medical doctor. So I'm making this video today to once again state that the biggest cause of sleep apnea and the best way to deal with it is to simply lose weight. Now I'm going to read a statistic to you and maybe, maybe you'll understand why so many people hated me for the video that I made. An estimated 160 million Americans are either obese or overweight. Nearly three quarters of American men and more than 60% of women are obese or overweight. Now, when over half the population is overweight or obese and you tell them that the way to get rid of their problem is to lose weight, <laughs> I guess I should have expected a major backlash from people who have no uh, self-awareness or the ability to see that they are actually the ones killing themselves and are seeking out an easy you know push button solution to their problems and to answer the question am I a doctor no I am not but I will read you a quote by a doctor that supports my conclusion okay now this is by Dr. Epstein from Harvard Though losing weight is easier said than done, it can yield real results. If we can get people to lose weight, it would make both sleep apnea and other health problems, such as heart disease, go away. Says Dr. Epstein, losing just 10% of body weight can have a big effect on sleep apnea symptoms. In some cases, losing a significant amount of weight can even cure the condition. So let me ask people out there who are watching this, if you have a snoring problem or you know you have sleep apnea, why would you, when there are elements and factors within your control, immediately run to the doctor and sign up for something that costs anywhere from $1,000 to $4,000 so that you can wear a mask every night like Darth Vader and breathe uh, with the assistance of a machine forcing air down your throat? when you can simply make healthier lifestyle choices. And I'm going to give you some ideas on how you can lose weight today. So this is not, I'm not here trying to fat shame anybody or weight shame anyone, okay? I'll be honest, I'm proud of the fact I don't have a double chin, all right? But then I exercise about three times a week on average. And I also do intermittent fasting. And I have found that these help me at the age of 38 maintain, um you know, a, a positive self-image. And it also helps me with my health in other areas. I rarely get sick and I sleep very well at night. So if you're overweight and statistically there is a good chance of it, do something about it. Address those underlying conditions first. Don't trust the medical industry. They are there to make a profit. They love people coming through their doors saying, fix me, fix this, when you could simply fix it yourself. So the first option today, I'm going to talk to you about helping your snoring, but also help getting your weight under control is intermittent fasting. And this is one of the easiest things you can do because it really requires almost zero effort. So before I get into it, Many have claimed that intermittent fasting diets that involve prolonged, that involve prolonging this fasted state have a multitude of health benefits, and they do. It's not just a claim. And you can Google or YouTube intermittent fasting benefits to see uh, people break it down with you know all of the reasons and the details. 
but basically, okay, it can improve glucose homeostasis so that your body is not producing insulin, thus making you hungry and thus making you want to eat and, and drink a lot. It'll boost your energy. It can increase natural hormone production and reduce inflammation in your body. Okay, and I will attest to all of this because I do it. I probably do intermittent fasting five days a week. And so all you have to do with intermittent fasting is basically put 16 hours between your period of eating. So if there's 24 hours in a day, you're only allowed to eat in that eight hour window. And the other 16 hours, you're not eating. You're just drinking water, if that. And a very easy way to do this is that, you know, you eat your last meal at say, you know, seven or eight at night. And then you don't eat the next day until noon and that's 16 hours and you will find that your appetite is much easier to control you'll be eating much less even if you're very hungry and and this is something I do I eat whatever I want pretty much as much as I want in that eight hour window and it works out just fine for me and I'm not and I'm not saying I have you know four percent body fat no I got a little bit of a you know stomach on me <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Captain Six Pack Abs, but again, I don't have a turkey neck, all right? And it is Thanksgiving. No gobble gobble here. So look into intermittent fasting. It's very easy. It works wonders immediately, and anyone can do it. Now, another thing you can do, and you should do, is exercise. You should be exercising three times a week. Just commit to three times a week. Don't set out to do six days a week, seven days a week, okay? If you want to go get P90X or whatever and do it, you know, I think it requires six days a week for like three months or something ridiculous, go do that if that's what you want to do. But you don't have to do that. And in my opinion, that's one of the worst ways to frustrate yourself up front to where you don't ever want to work out. For me, working out is as simple as walking, okay? Choosing to walk. You know, if you if you if you have to go someplace that's not too far away and you can walk, if it's just, you know, a half a mile away, walk. That way you walk there and walk back, you've walked a mile. Um, you know, you can easily walk places up to a mile, mile and a half, and you will burn lots of calories. And walking is just a, an absolutely great um low impact exercise on your body. But let's get into actual exercise routines. For me, one thing I do is uh, I run sprints. And this can be embarrassing, okay? Especially at first when you're running sprints and maybe you're really slow. A lot of times my first sprint in my workout feels like I'm running in slow motion. I'm like, wow, felt like I was running in slow motion. And then I go, well, probably because I was. But you know, by the second or third one, I'm, I'm running pretty fast and um, running all out at absolute, you know, full capacity for say 40 to 50 yards. I mean, I'm talking all out. I mean, I'm talking your entire focus, awareness, all that you are is focused on going as fast as you can for that distance. And then you simply walk back and repeat it. And you can do it eight to 10 times. And it may not seem like much, but I guarantee you by the sixth or seventh one, your legs are going to feel like rubber if you're doing it right. And that's one workout, and you can do that in about 25 minutes. Take a bottle of water with you and, you know, have a sip of water after every two sprints or whatever. And you can even rest 30 seconds between sprints after your walk back. So that's, that's an easy workout that does not require a gym membership, okay? You can also do uphill sprints as a variation, and uphill sprints are absolutely amazing too. Another great thing you can do is push-ups and pull-ups. Do five sets of each of those. And it doesn't matter if you can do 10 pull-ups, five pull-ups, two pull-ups, or, or if you can do 10 push-ups, 30 push-ups, or 50 push-ups. The key, okay, the key to doing this is called muscle failure, all right? And this is what Hugh Jackman's uh, workout routine when he trains to do Wolverine movies is based on. He does weights, but you can use the, the failure principle, muscle failure, when you do any type of workout. And it's very easy to do. That just means that you do five sets of pull-ups, 
and you max out every time. And now you're not going to be doing this workout more than once a week, okay? Don't do this workout on a Monday and then do it again on a Wednesday. Don't do that, all right? Maybe do it on a Monday and do it again on a Friday or do it again the following Monday. And so you do five sets of pull-ups, five sets of push-ups. You can do five sets of dips off of a park bench, you know, to do uh, triceps and work out your shoulders. And then you can do um, sets of leg lifts. And if you do f like four of those, and you can even throw in box jumps on a park bench, okay? And a box jump is simply, you stand still, and then you maybe, maybe you lean down a little bit, and then you jump up, like maybe a foot or two, and then you step back down. This is very low impact on your body, very low impact on your knees, um, and it will give you an absolutely great anaerobic workout. There's, there's really two main types of exercises, anaerobic and aerobic. Anaerobic is like weightlifting, push-ups, pull-ups, aerobic is like jogging for 30 minutes, um, swimming for you know 20 minutes or something like that. So you don't need a gym to do this. If you want to do some aerobic workout, okay, it's as simple as going jogging. You don't have to jog fast. All you have to do is set out and time yourself. Time yourself for 20 to 30 minutes. And even if all you're doing is going through the motions and you're going slower than you would, you know, jogging, than if you were walking, it doesn't matter. Because again, it's, it's only about doing the most you can do. And eventually, you'll be doing it easily. I remember one time I came back from an injury. I hadn't worked out consistently for like a year and a half. And I tried to go run, I think, for 20 minutes, and it was absolute torture. Now running 20 minutes for me would be no problem at all. But it's just that initial pain, that initial, that initial, you know, um, shock to your body that makes people want to quit, but don't quit. And you can do exercises like that three times a week. Look up other exercises. You can, you can look up plyometrics, which is like a fancy version of aerobics that involves some jumping and agility. Look that up on YouTube. Do Find a plyometric workout for 20 to 30 minutes and do that, okay? These are all things you can do at home or outside in your backyard or at the park for absolutely free. And so at this point, if anybody is trolling my stop snoring videos because I actually do the research and because I'm actually not a lazy ass and I'm not here, um, you know, trying to make myself a dependent on the corrupt medical system that exists only for a profit and and I'm not trying to limit other people's life choices, opinions or the way they think and see the world. Hey, if you want a CPAP, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. You want to go get uh, sleep apnea surgery? Lots of people have regretted it. I don't care. Go ahead. But if you're smart, you'll take care of all of the risk factors that you can yourself first, all right? And you will, in that process, eliminate other serious uh, potential health problems like diabetes. Think about it. If all you do because you have sleep apnea is go get a CPAP and you don't change anything else, you're still at risk for diabetes. You're still at risk for cardiovascular disease, cancer. Um, you're still not improving your mental or physical health. And you're just basically you're just basically admitting that you gave up without even trying. So don't come on my video and talk smack to me and accuse me of not having the right to share information <laughs> that that is honest, true, intelligent, and actually works. Just because you're lazy. All right, don't do that. And I'm not talking to the you know, the cool people out there, the smart people, the people who are looking for legitimate solutions. I'm talking about the people who get pissed off because they're too lazy to get off their ass and actually solve the root fundamental reason for their sleep apnea. All right, so that's just a couple of things you can do to get your weight under control. Um, you don't have to get a CPAP. You don't have to get surgery. Start, start with what I'm saying, diet and exercise. Then maybe try an OTC over-the-counter uh, stop snoring mouthpiece. After you've done all that, after you've lost 10% of your body weight, after you've tried the you know um, minimally invasive stop snoring mouthpiece, if you're still not improved, which I seriously doubt 
would be the outcome of that, then go get a CPAP, all right? But do what you can within your control first. All right, well, thanks for watching this video. Leave your comments below, and I look forward to uh, reading all of them. All right, see you on the next video.